Good Monday morning, I am MPJ, and this is Fun Fun Function. Today we are going to continue the weekend project hack uh, that I started a couple of weeks ago. You can find the first episode there. It was actually not my intent to make that kind of episode, uh, and I, to be perfectly honest, I completely hated that episode when I uploaded it. I generally aim for 12 minutes and the episode turned out to be 30 minutes. I didn't succeed in completing a hack. It didn't tell a cohesive story, it didn't have a neat script. Like, there was basically a lot of things about it that was wrong. But it got, it got such a great response. Uh, and it, um, yeah, that's the thing about YouTube videos. There almost seems to be an inverse relationship between what videos I think will be successful and what videos are successful in, in reality. What was good about that last video? So I went back and looked at the comments and, uh, and the video and tried to figure out what, what did I accidentally create here. When you look at that episode, it, it captures what programming really is, what it really feels like, and uh, what's nice about it, really. Yet you're creating something and you run into problems and you hammer your head against them until you solve them. Slowly but surely, something is starting to take form. It almost has the same feel to it, like uh, the uh, Let's Play uh, format that gamer YouTubers use. The problem is that the episodes get very long. It took ages to edit the last video and I don't really know how I'm supposed to make this work. So that is the uh, objective of this episode is to try to figure that out. We need to experiment with this a little bit to find the format. Uh, <laughs> and I also, uh, I have not scripted this, I'm just going to try to let it flow. I will edit this heavily, but I will try to give you, I will not try to hide the errors that I make as much. So uh, let's just jump into it. Uh, uh, so this project is, this is a very common problem for me. Now I'm jumping into some code here. Uh, it was several weeks since I uh, did this project. I was looking at this code. I did, I, did, I did go back and watch the last episode, but it didn't really help because I seem to have written some code, uh, some code here uh, that was not there in the last episode. So I have coded some stuff here since the last episode. Uh, and this is, this is quite a normal problem in programming that you're jumping into code and you don't know what who the hell wrote this shit? And then you look at the git blame and say, oh, it was me, I just don't remember it. This is why I often try to keep a log of what I'm doing. And git commits are great, but I often feel like I need something more granular than that. So I try to keep a work log. Let's do that. Okay, okay, work log. Uh, and I often tend to I like to write down a current goal uh, to keep myself focused on what I'm doing. So sometimes I get the impulse to do a refactoring or try to, oh, we should pull in this library. Uh, but if it doesn't help you on your way to your goal, uh, that is actually just a diversion or busy work. So I tend to, when I feel like, oh, I want to refactor this, I say to myself, yes, you're allowed to do that, but only after you have completed your current goal. And you can use that cleanup or refactoring as a kind of reward for completing a goal. So what the hell is our current goal? I don't, uh, we're making something with this button. We're creating a Pomodoro timer eventually, but that seems like a very big goal. I want something that we can reasonably complete today, maybe. So, what about... I don't know, um, okay, let's think, I'm tired, uh, make a, make a, make a, make a, uh, sometimes when you're, uh, writing, it's just a good idea to just write stuff out. We want to press the button and have the server log out the 
number of the button that was pressed. Bam! Right, that is a goal. So our current goal is to press a button here, uh, one of these four, uh, and have the server log out the uh, number of the button that was pressed. That is, that is our goal. That is realistic, it's achievable, it's unambiguous. So last time I put our server up on Google Cloud. Uh, and since the Google Cloud will cost you a little bit of money, I actually just deleted that cluster after I made the video. So today we are going to spin that up again. That's our first objective so that we are back where we were last time. So uh, I write that in the work log. Okay, uh, let's get going. Let's get the server back up again. Okay, how do I create a cluster? I think that I have this in this curl.txt file. I'm gonna just change this to something more descriptive, like uh, uh, notes, no, uh, cuddling. What kind of name it? If this was a Twitch stream, I would probably ask the chat, but I don't have any. Uh, squiggles. Squiggles. That's fine. All right. So I think G Cloud content. This one. I think that I will paste this one and see. Okay. See. Yes. Creating cluster. Oh, this took some time before. Uh, I will. Probably go do something. Oh, it's done. Okay, so we need to deploy the server on Google Cloud. Do some Googling. Deploy Kubernetes. Uh, ah, Kubernetes.json. Oh, uh, no, didn't find anything. Uh, G Cloud. Da, 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 da. Oh, here's something. Uh, cube CTL create F, and then it's where? Where is it? Kubernetes.json. Does this work? Yes, I think it did. Let's close this. So what we did here was that uh, this Kubernetes.json is the file that describes how the cluster should look on uh, Kubernetes or this part of the cluster. So this is kind of a server description, sort of. Don't know if this worked though. Let's say kubectl get rc. So this gets us a list of replication controllers. And replication controllers in Kubernetes is, that is the stuff that controls servers at, at, like, and the servers themselves are called pods. So we can do kubectl get po for pods. And that seems to be like, you see here that it has status running there. All right, so this is good, but we need to expose it to the internet as well. I think I had that in my squiggles. No, of course I don't. I'm just gonna go to my videos and look at where, uh, what the heck? Okay, look at how red my nose is after I've been outside walking. kubectl expose, uh, and I expose a replication controller like that, and type. Load balancer. There. Did this work? You must provide one or more security. Oh, wait. I need to exp tell it that it's a replication controller. Cool. It's exposed. Let me just copy this so that I have it in my squiggles uh, here. So, this is, to me, this is very typical of how I do uh, development. There is some detail about something that you forgot kind of how you did and your brain 
helps you figure out sort of to, oh, I think I made a note of that there. I think I uh, made a video of that there. Um, uh, or perhaps that colleague of mine mentioned something about that kind of. I probably should ask her. Things are a mess. It's all over the place and you need to figure stuff out. Even when there is proper documentation, it's often hard to navigate that documentation uh, or to find exactly what you need. So you need to get this process and this feel about figuring things out. I think that we now can just do kubectl uh, get services. And now this should have an external IP, which so we should be able to curl to this. Whoops. Uh, did that work? All right, because we don't know if this works because it doesn't output anything, but it might do it in the logs. What I mean by not outputting anything is that uh, the uh, we're posting here to event, right, and it's received here. And we are just console logging uh, the body out, uh, but we're not actually sending anything to the response. Uh, so to see if this worked, we need to check out the the logs of this uh, of this pod here, this one. So to do that, I'm gonna copy paste that, and we're gonna cube ctl logs. Yes. Exactly here, body world, and that is what we sent here, like a hello world, and we're reading it uh, over here. So now we are back at where we started in the last video. Yay! All right, so where were we? Let's go back to the, the work log and remind ourselves. So the current goal is that we want to press the button and have the server log out the number of the button that was pressed, right? Uh, we have uh, a server going now. Um, I think that the next step is to uh, let, to just make the button call the server. Just anything, just, just have the button do something. Sub goal, get the button calling the server somehow. I think I've I added this shit here, uh, this service hook dot JSON. I don't know what this is. I guess that this is probably Okay, there's an IP here. I guess that this is the IP of the old cluster and it calls slurp and it posts some things here. I think that this is the kind of a webhook thing that is uploaded to the Spark cloud, which it will then call the, the um, our cluster, the, the uh, my Kubernetes cluster. Yeah, so let's see. Uh, we need to log into the Spark Cloud. Where is that even? Spark? Not, no, it's part. No, oh, they're not called Spark anymore. They're called Particle IO. Um, dashboard, perhaps. Yes, this is our dashboard. Okay, we have the photo on the Qtu waffle. Right, this looks good. I'm gonna try to plug this in. I need to get a USB extension cable because my computer is down there in order for the fan not to make too much noise to the mic. Wait, I realized I don't need a USB extension cord because this is Wi-Fi connected. This one is just for power. So I can just connect it to my monitor. Nope, that doesn't work. I don't think that the Dell monitor uh, actually, if you don't have have it connected as use shit, I don't Ugh, things are so hard. <laughs> you know what I do own? I own this USB battery. Da -da. That ain't this cool. So what this thing does now is that it downloads the uh, firmware, the the uh, software from the. Uh, 
uh, from the cloud and it downloaded it and run it. It's pretty cool. So you deploy things, as long as these things have Wi-Fi, you can deploy things, new firmware to them over the cloud. This was gray before, so I guess that the blue buttons means that they are online, maybe? Okay, cool. So our cuter waffle is now online. That seems like what we have named this. So how do I edit the code that is running on this thing? Oh, I click here maybe. Build. Yes. This is it. Okay, so I have made some stuff here. There's a lot of oh, there's a lot of stuff here. This is not nice code. Okay, I've partially implemented this actually. Uh, thank you, former MPJ. Um, I okay, tell me. Uh, I think that if we look at this loop here, uh, <clears throat> yeah, we see that I have so if button on at one. <laughs> Sorry, Swedish. Uh, is pressed. Uh, the then the LED is supposed to come on, and then it's going to delay for five hundred milliseconds, and then it's going to publish the button press uh, event here. Button press uh, with one uh, and sixty something uh, and private. Okay, and then. We have the exact same thing here, button 2 and also 60 here, 60 here, 60 here. I don't know what 60 is, but it seems like we have a partial implementation of this. And the button has died. battery just doesn't... I, I think that the battery doesn't realize that this is actually pulling any power. Because I suppose that this just pulls so little power, or it just doesn't... Tell this thing that it's charging. I don't know, but either way, uh, after a while, it will just shut itself off. So I need to actually do the thing with the extension cable. Ah. I swear to God that I'm not sponsored by IKEA, but these things, really good stuff. I fixed it. I am outside waiting on the train because uh, I need to go into the city because my monitor uh, died during the recording and uh, it won't come back up. So I need to buy a new monitor. I kid you not, this is not staged. This makes me very grumpy, of course, and part of me wants to just say, don't buy a Dell. Uh, because you need quality tools that you can rely on. But when it comes down to it, this is really just what the universe is like. <sighs> Things break down, it's a mess, and being a developer or any creative professional or any, any person making things for other people means that we, we deal with these things so that others won't have to. That is our job. So my job is to go to town, get a new monitor, and continue shooting afterwards. I have approximately 45 minutes before the last electronic store in town closes, so need to hurry. I literally just walked in and took the first monitor with that looks easy to carry. <laughs> Took a lot less time than I anticipated. And we are back with a functioning monitor. So this service hook here, I think that we can do hooks, particle, IO. Let's find out what this, how the service hooks works. 
and web web particle web hook. Let's see what we have. One hook, cool. Maybe web hook delete. We delete that and I need to find out again what my public IP is of Kubernetes. kubectl get services. It is this one. So let's paste that in here into the webhook of the uh, particle IO. See if we can find out how to create these. Oh, I just do particle webhook create. What's it called? Service hook.json. Cool. Interesting. I'll press the button here. And kubectl get po and see what logs looks like. kubectl get logs. Oh, kubectl. Let me get. Oh, oh, we're there. <laughs> okay, interesting. Um, so, what you what we did was that we defined a um, a service hook here, uh, and this service hook. Uh, is kind of like most web hooks if you're familiar with them. It has, specifies a, uh, an IP that it uh, calls to and a port and then an endpoint. Uh, what type of request it's going to post and what um, and what value. So this is a Spark event name, a Spark event value, and then the Spark core ID. So okay, so what is this? This is Okay, so I guess that this, this here, corresponds to this here. And the value here is going to be the, okay, so button press and button three, they come from our code in the Spark particle IO. So if I switch to the particle build here, that, is sent from this particle publish here. So particle publish will go to the uh, particle cloud and then it will send that on defined in, to whatever is defined in the service webhook here. Uh, and it will send on this J, uh, as this JSON blob. So it takes the Spark event name from the, uh, from the publish uh, in the publish uh, call here and the Spark event value. And it also uh, welds on the source, the Spark core ID. And the Spark core ID, I think that is, if we go to the dashboard, the particle dashboard, we'll see that it's this, right? This and this is the same. And that will later allow us to send send stuff back to the um, uh, to the photon. So I guess that this is mission accomplished. Our current goal was to uh, press the uh, button and have the server log out the number of the button that was pressed and we uh, that's exactly what we did. So when I press something, okay, I'm gonna try that again. Uh, you know what, we can tail the logs. If I do like no, uh, if I add an F to the uh, logs command in Kubernetes, it will follow the logs. So if I press the button now, bam, bam, nice. So this is a really good step on the way. I think that I'm just gonna admit it. 
so we have get status oops oh nothing is basically committed uh, I am going to add the docker file uh, git and uh, package.json uh, git and service hook.json I'm not gonna add the squiggles uh, we're gonna add the, the code itself uh, and we're not gonna add the work log either uh, and I'm just gonna do a kind of dirty commit here VIP WIP that's for stands for work in progress and I'm gonna git push mpj master just so that it's saved this is not the way that I like to work on uh, more serious projects, but this is a weekend hack and we're not too concerned with git message history. <sighs> All right, so that's it for today. Um, so we made a little bit more progress today. We actually, uh, I, we actually accomplished what we set out to do this time, uh, which was to press the button and have the server log out the number of the button that was pressed. Uh, much thanks to my former self that uh, obviously did this a couple of weeks ago. There's a lot of mess here that I would like to clean up. Uh, maybe we uh, we will we will do that next time. But I think I want to make a bit more progress before we um, go into the uh, go cleaning anything. Well, let's hope that my screen doesn't break next time. Uh, we might get some more coding in next time. Uh, of I'm still, still struggling with getting these Let's Code sessions to work. I really want them to work. You will just have to bear with me uh, while I, I experiment with these. Uh, I promise they will eventually become awesome. I don't promise that, really. Anyway, I am MPJ. This is Fun Fun Function. Until next Monday morning, stay curious. <laughs>